Hey guys, welcome back. This is Steve with the Stream Doctor again. And if you're watching this one and I hope we've seen some of our prior videos and all where we talked about some of the simple repair work, like replacing a switch in a guitar, um, <clears throat> doing some wiring on some pickups, doing some setup work, and some other things such as that, changing out a potentiometer in the strat over here. And like I said, this is not Fender Guitar Central, it just happens to be what I'm working on right now and all. But a question I get often asked when I work on these guitars and when I build and rebuild some things and all and, and tinker around with them, I always get asked the question, well, should I build a guitar or should I just outright buy a guitar? Well, that's a good question. It kind of depends on what you want and what you want to do with it. I mean, some people walk into a store and it doesn't have to be a, you know, three or $4,000 instrument. It might be just something cheap, a $200 you know, a little Squire Affinity, kind of like this guy over here. This one's been modified and messed with and everything else. It's kind of like a little mule around here with different parts when we play with it and stuff. But it could be a $200 guitar off the shelf that you like. You love the way it sounds. You love the way it feels. You don't want to do anything but keep strings on it and play it. Um, maybe it's a matter of you want something better, something modified, something changed around. If you watch some of the episodes by now, <coughs> you're familiar with, the, with my Ash Mexican Telecaster over here and how we've already modified it a little bit with four-way switching, getting a little more tone out of it. It's It'll probably get some better pickups on down the line, something a little nicer. Maybe a little 59 humbucker at the bridge or a chrome humbucker at the neck like we talked about, like Albert Collins or something. But something along those lines, maybe that's what you want to do. You, know, you can buy these guys used all day for a decent price. I think brand new, they're a little over $600. Um, but you can buy those. And they're really good guitars, good wood, good components in it. They've got good tuners, and they tune out and they play nice, good necks on them. But you can spend a little bit of money on some really good electrics in it and have it change it from a good guitar to an absolutely great guitar. But it depends on your skill level, too. I'm not going to tell anybody just to go out and start repainting and refinishing a guitar and all. I'm not going to do a finish for them here. I'm not going to talk about how to paint guitars because... My techniques are probably not correct according to other people. I know, I know what I like. I know what my standards are for it being finished to a certain extent. Everybody's going to be different than that. If you want a professional job on a finish, pay a professional to do a finish. Don't come to Joe Blow Guy down the street, which is kind of what I am. I don't make a living at this. I'm just sharing some of the knowledge I've gained over the years to hopefully help someone else out and because I enjoy this. Um, like this guy, for instance. This is a really fairly cheap Squire Affinity made in China. This neck didn't even come on this guitar. It actually came off another one because it's in better shape. Um, but from the factory, the tuners are not bad. They're not great. They're not bad. The fret work on these is pretty nice. The ends are finished pretty good. You're not rubbing your fingers on them or anything from the factory. This is the tortoise shell pick guard that was on the ash tether when I got it, but I didn't like it, so I stuck it on this guy just to have one on it. These are, I think these are some, this is a Mexican pickup, that's a factory Squire pickup. It does have really good fender components in it here, and as far as potentiometers and a fender three-way switch, so it, it plays well. This finish is kind of neat. Um, this guitar was blue when I got it, a metallic blue, it's really in terrible shape. I uh, took a heat gun, scraped the finish off of it, had painted it red, and my son knocked a big spot into it, so it we didn't really want to salvage it wasn't that great of a guitar anyway. it had some good paint on it but wasn't a great guitar so anyway, i stripped it back down took a blow torch a little propane torch like you solder pipes with and just just charred this whole thing then sanded it down with some sandpaper sand all the way down to 800 grit sandpaper wet sanded it then went back with some cherry dye like a furniture dye use whatever color you like but it was really a bright red cherry and rubbed it really got this kind of flame looking going on and then went back with, I think it's right behind me, it is, with this stuff, it's called Renaissance Wax. I'll put a link to it, and also really cool stuff, it's expensive stuff, this little jar, and it's, it really kind of smells quite hard. Once it finally gasses out, it does really well. It's, it rubs down to the finish, and it may have this, may have this nice shiny sheen to it, but it really feels good. It, feels you know nice and raw like a piece of wood the only problem it is a raw piece of wood 
if you get oil or get grease off the hands on this, it's going to leave a stain. You're not going to get out of the woods, but we'll get down in it. But it does look good. And that old Charlie. My door's open. Get out. Go. 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 Well, that will have to be edited, won't it? If you use the wax on this, it still is raw wood. The wax is not going to protect in like a hard coat of polyurethane or even a thick coat, coat of rubbed lacquer, which is still kind of porous, but it's still got a pretty hard finish on it and stuff. You know, factory fender finishes like these, these are really hard poly on them and all. It's, it's almost impenetrable without, you know, hitting it next to a rock or something. Yeah, you can scrape it off. The only way even to remove the stuff just a bunch with a heat gun, no chemical taken off. You take acetone and take you know lacquer off and stuff. Well, actually, this is a not a, it's an inexpensive guitar. It is fun to play. I think everybody needs a cheap guitar around where you can throw around if it gets scratched, beat up, whatever. You don't have to care. You just keep on playing it. But put good enough electrics in it that it makes you happy that it sounds good. If it doesn't sound good, it's just gonna suck. Like this guy. If I replace the Mexican pickups and my telly with some really nice pickups, I'm going to turn around and take the Mexican pickups and put them in here and take the Chinese pickups out and kind of toss those to the side and improve it as we go and make a better guitar. Like I said before, everyone's familiar with this Mexican telly. We put good parts in it. It's still a good guitar. And you can still have your total investment even if you buy a brand new one. You know, less than $700 and have a really nice, nice guitar. I spend a little bit of money on it here and there and it plays as well as any $1,500 guitar. If you've got the budget to buy that $1,500, $2,000 guitar, great. But that is not what this series of videos is aimed at. It's aimed for folks like me. Working guy on a budget. Got a kid in school with various school activities and all that kind of thing. You know, bills stack up and got to put food on the table and keep the lights turned on. And stuff gets expensive sometimes. Life gets in the way. Or, you know, if you're a college kid in school, you know, obviously you got school to do, you got, you know, expenses to pay for, you got a car to pay for, gas, food, you know, your housing and all that kind of stuff. At least I hope you do. At least I hope mommy and daddy ain't paying for every little thing. You actually have to learn what it is to work like the rest of us do. Sorry, just a personal thing there. But then, you know, I wanted a custom Telecaster. I wanted a 51, yeah, actually a 52 Telecaster. You know, first year they put the Tele on the headstock, of course 50 being the broadcaster that got sued, then the no caster in 51, and then in 52 they came out with a Tele that was pretty much like this and all. You know, you strings through the back and all, just a plain neck plate. Probably had a serial number on them. Um, this is a, a vintage amber tinted lacquer neck. It is a Mexican neck. It is sold by Fender as an aftermarket neck. Um, I think they're about 250 bucks. The frets have kind of a goldish tint to it, so it looks kind of vintage. Ping tuners on it. They're factory Fender tuners, but they are ping tuners that come on this on this particular neck. They come on the Baja tellies and some of the other stuff like that. I well, have on a lot of the Mexican telly, the older type Mexican tellies. Not sure if they're you know what's on the Americans. Um, See, that's a, this is a Baja Tele control plate, which already had four-way switching in it. It also has an S1 switch, so when the pickups are in the middle position, where they're running in series or parallel, or parallel here or series, it'll knock them out of phase. Kind of a neat little modification if you like that kind of thing. I had to have a control plate anyway. Bought this one all together. Vintage style, fender bridge, got compensated saddles. Your twisted tele pickups. This is a copy of the 51 no caster pickup. And this guy here looks like a standard fender tele pick, bridge pickup. I mean neck pickup. But it has a raised bobbin in it, so it's got a little more output, like a strap. That's why they call it the twisted tele. Also has the third wire added to it for the four-way switching. I wanted a five-hole pick guard or five screw pick guard. Plain, you know, piece of black plastic and all of or just single ply. Just like a regular 52. And pretty much I want a 52 in a color that it make in 52. This color is Tripoli Turquoise. You can see it on the side where it's not messed with as much. It's Tripoli Turquoise. This is a lacquer. It's an automotive lacquer. It's not 
nitro cellulose like they use on traditional guitars this stuff will harden up in a couple of days some ash body this body I do need to talk about the body for just a second I'll mention a friend of mine named Paul Waldrop in uh, Texas and Waldrop guitars on Facebook check them out check out some of his work he has several his raw works and project does some stuff with pilot wood this is American ash this body was really, really nice in raw form when he sent it to me. It had no finish whatsoever, no sealers or anything. And you can really see the grain in the wood. Really pretty guitar. Um, I used black dye and water. And uh, just rub the thing down with black dye to raise the grain in it. And then sanded it back down all the way down to, I think, 800. Then I sprayed the lacquer on here. Let it sit on there for about a day. Then went back with 800 and sanded it all the way down to, I think, 2,000. Then apply the Renaissance wax again on this guy. So it, it, it's got a really nice natural feel to it. It looks like a faded guitar. So it looks like a 52, but I didn't want it relic. I don't want to see gouges and things and all that kind of stuff. That's my personal taste. I don't like that unless a guitar has real, you know, wear, like relic wear, buckle rash, and all that kind of stuff. And I'll do that enough myself. And the finish is thin enough, it'll, it'll probably get scarred up a little easier than some of the poly guitars will. But that's just the way I finish this one. You don't personally have to finish it that way, but that's just whatever you want to do. But just give you an idea of things you can do. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't go spin. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I've got all the labor was done myself on this guitar. And let me know if you like it or not in the comments and all. I, I value your opinion, but I don't care if you don't like it. I built this guitar to suit me. That's what it's about. Build what you like. Maybe a Les Paul style guitar. Maybe a kit guitar. Just be careful what you pay for with the kits. We might eventually try a kit and see what kind of qualities in them. I know Stu Mac or Stuart McDonald, they make some nice kits, but the headstock does not come cut. You have to take a band saw to cut your headstock, which is kind of cool because you can cut whatever design you want in the headstock at that point. But, you know, factory fender neck, the fret works. Fret's going to be pretty well dressed out. This guitar's going to, or neck's going to be pretty much ready to bolt on whatever guitar you got buy a good quality body from someone like Paul Waldrop. The neck the neck pocket was nice. The hose were already drilled here for the neck and stuff. Everything fit really nicely. And the hose were already drilled for the bridge. All I had to do was drill the hose here for the bridge plate itself. And he'll probably drill those at your request and all, but just depending on what kind of parts you use on it. If you buy a kit, a lot of that stuff's already done, just depending on who you buy a kit from. Wouldn't buy the cheapest kit on the shelf because the most expensive of the kit is going to be in your neck. And if you get a cheap neck, it doesn't matter what you do to it, it's not going to play well. If you have to, if you spend $200 on a kit and then you have to go spend another $200 at a shop just to have the frets done or whatever, what have you accomplished? I mean, you can go buy a nice guitar for $400 and it needs no work and you start playing it. But, you know, like I said, it's all about personal preference. It's all about what you like. I will leave some affiliate links to the website to, as far as some of the parts in this guitar, like the pickups in it, the bridge, um, some of the controls and stuff, the switches, the tuners, the neck, stuff like that, um, will not be a link to this body. I know that Amazon, for instance, sells a lot of Fender bodies. You don't have to pay shipping if you buy it through Amazon most of the time. They sell Mex made in Mexico Fender replacement bodies. I know some black ones, candy apple red, blonde and white. You know, some really cool stuff. And they don't have the holes drilled on them either. They have all the tr traditional routes in them and the holes and stuff under the pit guard. Just like the old Telecasters, if you're building a vintage style instrument, it is a good way to go. And it's still cheaper most of the time than buying something new off the shelf. Um, really about it for now just trying to give you an idea of the way you can go if you got questions about it you know let me know if you're on the fence about building yourself a guitar about just the satisfaction of enjoying it you know pull the trigger buy the thing man you live once enjoy it you know build something cool and at the very least if it's not what you want it to be or if it's not great it's a really cool wall hanger it's a cool story Something to tell your kids, you know, I gave it a shot, or if you are a younger guy, something, it's something to get your hands on. You'll see what it's like to do some woodwork and a little fret work and all that kind of stuff you have to. And it's really cool to learn some electrical work. I um, would recommend before you start soldering in on your guitar, you know, buy you one of those little LED kits off of uh, Amazon or whatever that has the uh, 
little electrical kit like a little transistor radio, just a little sequencing lights or something like that. And learn how to solder on something, a little five or eight dollar kit, you know, whatever, before you spend six or seven hundred dollars on a guitar and you've got a screwed up mess, an expensive mess at that. With that being said, guys, like I said before, I am an affiliate. I do um, make a small commission off of stuff when you click on those links and you purchase from them. And if you do that, I do greatly appreciate that. That the what little money I do make off of that does go back into this hobby. It helps me buy the parts and stuff like this. No, I don't. I don't get free parts or endorsements for this or anything like that. Maybe eventually that'd be great if I did. And of course, if I do, I will push it. But I promise you that whatever that I try to sell or try to you know encourage people to look at buying on my YouTube channel and hopefully eventually on my website that I'm working on. I will not push a product that I haven't tried myself. I do not believe in the, that kind of dishonesty just to sell something. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't want folks to do that to me. But that being said, thanks for watching again. Thank you for taking time out of your day to indulge me and, and watch this and, and support our hobby. Again, guys, keep tearing them apart. Keep putting them back together. You know, keep improving these things. And, hey, man, build one. You might... You know, I just got to say, I, I envision this to be what it is, and the finish just kind of took a mind of its own as it went, and it faded something here, and saw the grain and the edges. This thing, I couldn't have envisioned the finish to come out and make me any happier than it did. And as far as the way it feels, it's got a fat neck, fatter profile than this guy and my others. It feels really good in the hands. As far as the way it plays, I could not have bought a guitar out of a custom shop that suited me any more of this. I mean, not oftentimes do you get exactly what you want. Was through a lot of trial and error, built some other stuff, made some mistakes, did some other things. I've got a strap laying here on the shelf. That's another project for later on. I've had this thing apart four times, still not happy with it. This guitar went together great the first time. Doesn't always happen, but that's how you learn. That's how you experience new things. That's how you enjoy yourself. I'm not a teenager anymore, but yet, I challenge myself every day and every time I sit down to do this, see if I can do something different, see if I can learn something I didn't know before. And I, I firmly believe that as long as we keep that attitude, no matter if we're, you know, if we're 13 or 35 or, or 85, if we try a new challenge every day, you know, we improve ourselves, we improve our quality of life, and it doesn't get so mundane, we don't get caught in these electronics all the time. That being said, Stop watching YouTube for a little bit, but make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon when you see something come up. Please check on the affiliate links for me, and then break out the tools. Tear something apart. If you tear it up, hey man, they make bundle and paint and screws and bevel wire. Put that thing back together. But learn something. Enjoy it. Feedback questions are open, guys. If you got anything to say, please let me know. Once again... We'll keep tearing them apart, keep fixing them, and keep building them. Until next time, I'm Stephen with the String Doctor. You guys have a good day, and thanks for watching.